Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today I'm going to do a solo playthrough of Orleo Invasion, the expansion, using the Solio, Solio, <laughs> Solo Scenario of Capital Verzon. I think that's how you say it. Uh, this is the second of the three solo scenarios that come with the Invasion expansion. This one is at the medium level difficulty and I will tell you it is difficult enough for me. <laughs> I've only won it once, and that was just by the nick of my teeth, so I'm guessing I'm probably going to lose this one, but I'm going to enjoy it just the same. Hopefully you guys are as well. So this video, I'm just going to show you how to set it up, and then the video below this, if you just want to jump right to the playthrough, will be the actual playthrough of the game. So let's get setting this game up. So here we have the one player board that you're going to use. Everything is the same as the regular base game, except for that you will start with one specific good tile and that's that market stand tile right over here this you start with and you can use that right away that actually comes with the expansion and what you can do in there is you can trade as long as you put a trader there you can trade up to two goods for money or you can trade money for specific goods otherwise you'll have your four starting people and your guild halls right up there on top then you're set to go here we have the scenario board itself. What you have here on the left side is all of the events. So once again, just like the other, the dignitary solo scenario, all of the events are predetermined. You'll go through them, so we have 14 rounds to be able to complete our specific objectives. We have five objectives that we need to do. The first, we need to collect 10 coins and be able to give them up by the round nine, by round nine, so round nine of the uh, on the event track, you can see it right there. If we can give up ten coins, we've completed that objective. Our second objective is to build a guild hall or trading post in Locus or L O C H E S. I don't know how to say that. So we just need to build a, a guild hall or a trading post there, and we're set to go for our second objective. Our third objective we need to bring 12 victory points worth of goods to Verzon. And if we do that, we give up those 12 goods, we've completed objective three. And I'll show you after this section how you know what the victory points are per the goods. Number four, and this is probably the most difficult objective that I've had completing. You have to get 25 coins in one go. You have to be able to give up 25 coins. That's after giving up the 10 from the first objective. So in this 14 rounds, you have to make 35 coins. Yes, I said that. 35 coins. That's a lot. <laughs> With only one board, too. Anyways, um, once you do that, great. Then you can move on. And you don't have to do these objectives in order unless you're doing it hard. I am not doing this at hard. I'm doing this at regular. The final objective is you have to have at least 25 victory points for the total amount of your development track and you're going to take this equation into account. So what you look at is you take all of your trading posts, plus all of your citizen tiles. You take that, multiply it by your uh, development level, and that gives you the victory points. If you can get up to 28 for those victory points, you have one or completed that objective as well. And if you've completed all five objectives, you have won the game. On the right side there, you can see, so instead of having that good deeds board that you saw in the uh, dignitaries uh, scenario, you just have two things that you can do. Uh, and to, to obtain citizen tiles. And the reason you want to obtain citizen tiles is only for objective five. Objective five, the more citizen tiles you get, the better you, better chances you are of getting 28 VP with uh, that equation. So you can either expand the university, and so every time you place a one of those in one of those workers there, you would get a coin or go up the development track, or you can fund, found the city council, and that will just give you a coin. And if you complete that track, you also get a, uh, a citizen tile. Just giving you the overall view here, I just want you to see you can still get citizen tiles on the development track, as well as going, going up the knight's track or the boatsman track. However, boatman track, we have the same issues we had with the dignitary scenario. You only start with four of each type of worker. So there's four all the way from the monk down to the scholar as well as the technology tiles. That means if you go up the boatman track, you can only go up to level four. So I don't really know. 
how you would get that citizen tile. So that one's pretty much useless, but just wanted to show you where the other citizen tiles are and where you can obtain them. Unlike the dignitary scenario, we are going to actually have goods in this game. However, what you're going to do is you're going to grab 40 random goods, and then you're going to place them around these cities that I have those little uh, tokens on. So I have them there so I remember which cities they are. I'm going to put goods on the surrounding uh, locations around those specific cities, and that's it. So the rest of the board you're not really going to use. You're only going to use certain cities. And then the remaining uh, goods that you don't put there, so that's four that you're, you're going to be putting of the 40 those goods out on that board. The remaining you're going to put in the supply, and you can buy those through doing other types of actions using your goods tiles, etc. etc. So, I'm going to set that up quick, and you can see what it looks like. Boy, can I do that fast. <laughs> so here you go. These are just showing you where all the goods are going to be. And so that's ways that I can collect those goods, especially for objective three, so that I can have 12 VP worth of goods to be able to bring them to Verzon. This tile just shows you what you get for victory points per the specific type of goods. So brocade is worth five, wool is worth, uh, worth four, wine is worth three, cheese is worth two, and grain is worth one. And coins themselves are worth one VP. That's more for the competitive, so you don't have to worry about that. Here I'm just trying to show you that these are the remaining 40 goods that were not placed on the board that we have for supply. So if there's another way that we can obtain these goods, these are the goods that are available to us. Just like in the last solo scenario, there are going to be some good, good tiles that we can obtain. Or they call them place tiles. Sorry, not goods tiles. Place tiles. However, there aren't specific ones that you use. You just shuffle these up and choose a random five. So I'm going to do that, and you choose that for each level. So here's my level two, and here's my level one. So I'm going to do that for each level. So start with level one. My random ones are going to be the windmill. The herb garden, Let's see. Here we go. shipping line, wool manufacturing, cheese factory. Let's see, is that five? One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. So those are my five level ones. Let's see about the level twos gunpowder tower. Pharmacy, Cellar, School, and Well. So those are our five level twos. Now, if I buy any of these, of course I'll tell you what they do. I'm not going to go through each one just in case because it's not really worth it if I'm not going to use it. And that, my friends, is the setup for Oleo. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you're ready for the playthrough. Root me on, because I am not certain I'm going to win. <laughs> but it'll still be fun regardless. So, hope you guys enjoy, and please watch the playthrough. Thanks again. Thanks again.